Hello everyone, welcome back. So today's problem is from electrostatic. So in this problem, we have a charged particle A that is fixed at the base of a uniform slope of inclination alpha. Basically, we have a plane uh, that is inclined at an angle alpha to the ground and a point charge is fixed at this point A. Another charged particle B is placed on the slope at an angular position of beta from the line of greatest slope through the position of the first particle. Okay, so the line of greatest slope passing through the first particle will be this line over here. So the second charge, as we can see, it, it's kept such that it is making an angle of beta with the line. So the coefficient of friction between the particle B and the slope is given to be mu, where mu is less than tan alpha. For the particle at B to stay in equilibrium, what could be the maximum value of the angle beta? So basically, we have to balance the forces of the charge B and figure out what's going to be the maximum maximum value of beta. So yeah, give this problem a try guys, then check out the solution. So I'm going to begin by naming the plane as lowercase a, b, c, d. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the view of the plane a, b, c, d along its normals. So basically I'm going to observe it something like this such that I'm looking at the plane along its common normal. Okay, so in this representation, the plane a, b, c, d will just look like a rectangle. Okay, and at the point a, the charge q will be fixed. And this is going to be the line of greatest slope. Okay, and we have the charge B somewhere over here. Okay, so now the thing is the component of gravity in this particular direction, which is along the normal, is going to be G cos alpha. And basically the component of gravity along the plane is going to be G sin alpha. Okay, so in this particular view, if we want to mark the force of gravity, it will be in this direction and its magnitude will be Mg sin alpha alpha and the for electrostatic force of repulsion will be along the line AB. So I'm just going to write it as capital F and the force of friction will be in some arbitrary direction such that these three forces um, mutually balance each other out. Okay, now in the force balance in the perpendicular direction, if you do, it's just N equals mg cos alpha. So now let's just depict these three forces in the form of a triangle. So I'm going to represent mg sin alpha uh, as a vertical. So it'll look something like this and the second force Okay, so now the reason for drawing mg sin alpha first is because this is a constant force, right? It's It will be constant depending upon where you keep the charge B. It will always be along the same direction and it will always have the same magnitude. Whereas the direction of friction and the direction of capital F will depend upon where we keep the second charge. Okay, so now let's just mark down the force of friction and before we do that, if you remember, there was a condition given to us that mu was less than tan alpha. Okay, so now this actually tells us something important. So we know that the force of friction, which is F, it is constrained to be less than mu times the normal reaction. And the normal reaction is just mg cos alpha. So now this whole thing is going to be less than, instead of mu, if I substitute tan alpha, what you get is mg sin alpha. So what this means is that the force of friction will be definitely smaller than the mg sin alpha force. So while we represent it in the triangle, we have to keep in mind that small f has a smaller length than mg sin alpha. So let's say this represents the force of friction f. So now if we know mg sin alpha and the direction of friction, then the third vector is very easy to write. It will be just this particular vector and this will be the electrostatic force f. The angle between f vector and mg sin alpha is also beta. So basically this angle is also going to be beta. Uh, in order to represent the multiple possibilities that exist here, I'm going to draw a circle with dotted lines. So basically the center of this circle is at the head of the mg sin alpha arrow. Okay, and its radius is small f. Okay, so what this circle does is tells us about the different possibilities. So let's say if small f vector was in this direction rather than the original direction that we took, then in this case, the vector capital F would be in this direction. So using this circle, we can visualize all the possibilities that exist here. Our goal initially was to figure out what is the maximum value of beta. So for a second, I'm going to get rid of the F vector and just absorb the tail of the electrostatic force. Now I know for sure that the tail will lie on the circle, right? So here, if you observe beta is just zero. And as I move along the circle, the angle beta will increase. And when this line becomes tangent to the circle, that's when the angle beta will be maximum. And now if I further move down along the circle, the beta angle beta will, so the maximum will be when capital F is tangent to this circle. So this represents a condition where beta is maximum. Okay, and if I complete the triangle, this is what F vector is going to be. Uh, using the properties of circles, this angle is gonna be 
a 90 degree. Okay, so if from this triangle, if we write down the value of sine beta, it would be small f over mg sine alpha. Okay, so uh, now if we look at this relation, what we are seeing is that beta is directly proportional to the force of friction, right? So in terms of magnitude, beta will be maximum when f attains its maximum value. And the maximum value of f is going to be mu mg cos alpha, right? So sine of beta max is going to be mu times cot of alpha. And yeah, that's about it. So from here, beta max turns out to be um, sine inverse of mu cot alpha. So that would be the answer to this question. So yeah, that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.